<clears throat> Hi, this is James, and on this episode, I'm going to demonstrate creating a Hello World application in Node.js. Um, the Hello World app has historically been like the most basic app you can build in a language. Um, most likely, the first app uh, you will build in a CS101 class if you're taking a class out of school. Um, Today, though, I'm going to put a slight twist on it and make a Hello app that, Hello World app that will not just output it to your screen, but say to the world through using uh, Twitter's API. So let's get started. Very first thing is um, you will have to have Node.js installed. If you do not already have Node.js installed, it's easy as uh, a brew install. Um, you can find a quick guide here. Um, it's easy as Node.js install on Mac. Later on, I will probably put up some quick guides on how to install this on other environments. But you know, it's easy as searching for how to install on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Yeah. <clears throat> So if you were to just type brew install node, um, most likely you need sudo in the beginning, put in your password. Since I already have it installed, it's not going to do anything. But if you didn't have it installed, it will go through all the steps and have node installed for you. Now, I'm currently in my project directory, and I'm going to create a hello world directory and get start now. With Node.js, something called npm is available, and I just want to quickly initialize npm. Um, I just press enter on all these and use default values. Um, what this will do is create a package.json file for you, and in here it just has some metadata for your application. And the very first thing that we need to create our Hello World application is um, we'll just call index.js. Um, just to get started and show that you can actually say you made a hello world application, we'll just save that and type node index.js. And as you can see, it just says hello.world. But that is not what we want. We want to say this on Twitter, not just to myself. I want to do something a little bit more interesting. So what we can do is we can use nodes um, awesome npm package libraries and search for something. So on Google, I'm going to just search for npm Twitter. The very first thing that comes up is some Twitter account. We're going to disregard that, but it just says Twitter npm. And we can look further into these documentation. But for now, we're going to install it. And to get it installed, we're going to just copy and paste the npm install Twitter. So just type that into your console. And if you were to take a look at your directory, there are something new called the node modules. And you can see the Twitter module being installed there. And what we can do from here is we can create a variable called Twitter and require Twitter in. Um, the Node.js require system has a way of just automatically being able to find um, the Twitter module, given that it's in like in a specific directory format. So we'll skip that for now. Um, actually, let me go back in. And next thing we're going to do is configure the module Twitter that we just required in. And let me go back to the documentation and. Literally, we can just copy this. I see here that they're capitalizing um, their main module object. So let me do that as well. But basically, just copy and paste this in. Copy. So what you're seeing here is um, this is the pretty much your secret keys that Twitter requires for you to be able to connect to Twitter and um, act as a user. So these first two lines is identifying your application on Twitter, and this is identifying 
the user that is going to be taking the action. So first step is we have to create a Twitter account. Um, I have already done so and I have logged into their application um, page. How you can get there is quickly go on Google and search for Twitter dev. And you can go here. And if you're not logged in, there should be like a login button there. And once you have logged in, I, I don't know why it's not higher up in the page, but you can find the manager apps section at the footer. Once you go here, um, I already have some test apps that I've been playing around with, but we can create a new app. Put in hello world, saying hello world. Um, this is really not that important right now because we're not going to be doing anything. Oops. You can leave the callback blank. Ah, somebody already used this. So I'm going to just add in some numbers to make it unique. All right, now the application is created. Um, for the most part, it's ready already. Um, the only thing we've got to do is go to our keys and access tokens area. Uh, we're going to first copy the consumer key, put it into the consumer key area. Also take the um, secret API, do the same thing. And these two sections are, like I said before, the user's token. And there's two ways of getting this. One, um, is setting up a login page and getting a whole user flow going where they go through Twitter's OAuth um, process. But we're going to be skipping all that and we're going to be generating a access token uh, specifically for your application. And we can do this by just um, going here and then create my access token. So this access token is strictly for your application. And we can just also copy the access token here, paste it, get the secret, paste it, save it. Now, technically, we're 99% there. Now all we have to do is use our client and say hello world. How do I do that? I'm gonna go take a look at the Twitter um, client's documentation. So let's go down to the usage areas. Um, this is getting the list of favorites, um, a list of favorites that a user may have, but that's not what we want at this point. They have a very simple thing here called client.post statuses updates and the status is going to be tyg bg for twitter okay so this is exactly what we want but we're going to change the text so first i'm going to copy and paste this into my application Let me copy that again So now that I have the code, um, one of the first things that I do notice is um, obviously we're going to have to change our status message. I'm going to say hello world. And I'm going to just add a testing one, two, three disclaimer just to let people know I'm testing and I'm not spamming. Okay. Now, what I, what I meant by is that the statuses that updates URL um, has recently been changed. So. I'm going to quickly go over to the Twitter documentations area and um, just quickly look up what the post status is supposed to be. And once we go there, there's a bunch of other things you can read into, but what I'm looking for is the proper um, URL. So it's actually statuses update. And I'm going to quickly change that statuses update. Uh, once I have changed that, instead of saying throw error, I'm going to change that to a console. Um, 
it just looks better and we'll still be able to tell if something went wrong um, I'm also going to just move my hello world console log up here as well now the only thing left to do um, is for us for us is to just run the application and when I run it I'm actually seeing a lot of error well not a lot of error I did get an error I believe so I'm going to scroll all the way up it's a long thread but I'm going to go to the place where I ran it and it should tell me what went wrong okay so I, actually all I had to do was console log the data portion of the error and it would have told me that currently the application is in read only mode so if I go back to my hello world application um, I can see that the access level is read only this means that I cannot perform any write related request to Twitter so what I'm gonna have to do is go to settings it's not here oh permission sorry and then I'm gonna change it from read only to read and write um, if you wanted to do direct access I can change it there but I'm gonna keep it at read and write um, it's best to ask for the least amount of permissions necessary for your application it helps with people interacting with it like when you interact with an app that asks for all your permissions uh, there's less chance that somebody's actually gonna um, connect and log into your application so now that I have done this um, from my experience the access token needs also needs to be regenerated with the new permissions um, because you can see that the access token that was generated previously was under the read-only um, access level. So I'm going to just click on regenerate my access token. So yes. And now we have our new one that I need to go back and update. I'm gonna oops, update my secret. And let's try it again. So let's see what the response was again. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top. Sorry about this. Didn't notice that their responses were like this gigantic. But this time there is no error. It gave us back a Twitter status update ID. Um, and actually we should be able to go on Twitter and see that that was done. See, you can see right here. Hello world, testing one, two, three. Um, technically, I shouldn't be able to write this, use this again. It should tell me that it's a duplicate. Twitter has a way of preventing um, duplicate text from being sent by the same user. And this should have caused an error. Status is a duplicate. And if I were to refresh this page, it should still only be one. Anyway. That is the end. Um, I just wanted to make the Hello World app a little bit more interesting and demonstrate how even with a limited knowledge of programming these days that you can do a lot more even with a simple Hello World app. Thank you for watching.